<laughs> Hello my friends, what's up? It's Carpo again. Making a quick video here about vaping and uh, I've only made probably two or three videos about vaping out of the 4,000 that I've made. But vaping is a big part of my life, not as something that I'm like obsessed with or something that I'm, uh, you know, basically what I mean is that it's something I do on a regular basis because I was a smoker for over 20 years. Actually, I was a smoker for about 25 years. And uh, when I was younger, I was at about a pack a day. And uh, gradually over the years, up until about two years ago when I started vaping, I had decreased to maybe a half a pack a day. But I realized that my addiction was with the romanticized version of keeping your hands busy, if you will. It's an oral fixation, and it's something that is... Um, a lot of people who have addictions, you know, um, are well aware of that, especially if you smoke. So, I did become a little bit obsessive about vaping. I wanted to get all the best stuff I could, not as far as like cost or price or fancy, but rather the, what worked the best. And I went through trying a whole bunch of different devices. And uh, so, I wanted to start off by, because I would like to include in this video a couple points, which was the main reason I wanted to make it. It wasn't just about vaping. It was about the dangers of vaping. It's something that people don't want to talk about. And uh, mostly because there's not enough information to really know uh, how dangerous it might be long term. But I do have just two facts I'd like to put out there. The first one is that there's a component in vape fluid, some vape fluid, called diacetyl. And diacetyl is it's a it's a it's a compound that's used in for artificial butter flavoring in like say popcorn. And so when you open up a bag of microwave popcorn and you smell it, don't do that. There was actually a case of a person who got popcorn lungs, what they call it. They'd eaten two bags of microwave popcorn a day for like nine years, and I guess they ended up getting popcorn lung, and really that was the diacetyl was definitely the culprit in that case. And uh it's used for artificial buttering, butter flavoring in all kinds of products, and it's used in vape fluid a lot. So you can avoid diacetyl if you go with the vape fluid from a company that declares and has testing done and, and you know is aware of what's in it. Most companies just won't say anything one way or another. And uh, they say that the levels of diacetyl are like 40 to 100 times less than cigarette smoking, but still there's a potential there, so you can't call it safe. Um, and I just think people should be aware if you have custard or muffin flavors or anything like that, that it may contain that. And just to do your own research on it to see what you can come up with. The second thing, which was the one I just found out today and really what inspired me to make this video, was formaldehyde. I have a bottle of vape fluid I bought last week. And I looked on it and it says, you know, may contain, I was reading the side after I'd finished the bottle, may contain, and it had diacetyl and all of the different, you know, things that could be in it. And then the, one of the last ones was formaldehyde, and it blew me away. I was like, you know, this, wait, how could formaldehyde be in vape fluid? So I went on and did some research and found out that the formaldehyde itself isn't in the vape fluid. It's that combustion at high voltage can create, I'm, I'm not, I haven't looked into the details of how it happens. I don't know if it catalyzes it, if it's temperature, the voltage, or exactly how it happens, but put it this way. They did a test where they uh, they had a machine that would vape one of the standard e-cigs, and uh, so they tested one at three volts, and there was no, there was no detectable levels of, uh, you know, formaldehyde in the end. So then they took one and they vaped the whole thing at five volts, and the levels were very high. In fact, I believe that the levels were much higher than even found in cigarette smoke. So if you're vaping at 5 watts or more, you might be doing more damage than you could even imagine. And so I'm just, I'm not here with the, the science behind it. I'd, I'd urge you to do your own research because most people don't vape over 5 volts. Um, I, my vape, I vape at about 3.3 volts. Usually it's somewhere between 3 and 3.5. And and it works. I did this to quit smoking. So, with, without offending anyone out there who is maybe an elite vapor, if you will, um, I, I find the whole vape, the whole vape nation, vape 
life thing to just be foolish. I think it's foolish. Uh, be, and and I'll, I'll tell you why. It's because I, those who used to smoke who found vaping can find another something to jump into. Uh, but people who say smoke hookahs or uh, cigars, there's a culture around that, you know. But cigarettes, there's no culture around smoking cigarettes. People just smoke. You're hanging out, your friend might smoke, you might smoke. It's not something you do ceremonial unless you're tribal. Um, and there are exceptions, but... With vaping, it's almost turned into something like a group effort, something cool. And the reason this bothers me is because when I was growing up, and when my, say when my parents were growing up and when I was growing up and the generations between that, um, smoking was cool. You smoked cigarettes because you were cool, because you were seen as cool. Oh, look, you know, they're smoking this, you know, you must be free. All the cigarette commercials that we, we grew up around and ads, um, made it seem like smoking was just the greatest fucking thing under the sun. And 20 years later, we're completely reversed, you know, everybody's finally figured out that smoking is dangerous. So, uh, it's funny because it was always kind of an obvious thing, you're inhaling smoke into your lungs. Everybody knows subconsciously that that could do damage. And most people consciously, I believe. So there's no excuse. I mean, a person who smokes know that they could be harming themselves. But a lot of smokers were almost ashamed to be a smoker. And when it comes to vaping, it's like something, hey, come on, join the club. And, and these kids are starting to vape who actually have never smoked cigarettes, you know, because they see this culture based around it. So what I'd like to say is to, for the vaping competitions, the vaping, and yes, they have vaping competitions where they stand back to back and see who can blow the biggest cloud. Um, I mean, they, I guess they even have a little thing to check the error and make sure that it's, you know, there's no, you know, the error's the same on both sides. I mean, they get really technical, and I'm into stuff. I like, uh, I like technology, and I'm really into, like, uh, the details within something. You know, if you're going to do a competition, you want the details. But just the idea of a competition, to me, to vape, just seems silly. But... I definitely don't want to offend anyone who's into that, if that's your thing. I just say if you do, and those are the ones that I would like to get through to, if you're vaping at very high temperatures, just use a lot of caution and make sure you know what you're doing. Because um, this is new to all of us. <laughs> I mean, vaping is not... It's not something that uh, we know a whole lot about. I've got this whole box full of vape crap. Some of the fluid I've made myself, a variety of different ones I've tried, and um, I've even made my own uh, glycerin cannabis tincture uh, with some BHO hash oil and made it and put it in here with the, uh, I actually used, uh, I used, best, I didn't use glycerin, I just used propylene glycol, I think a tiny bit of glycerin, but uh, it still hasn't separated after many months <laughs> of sitting in there, but anyway. You know, I started out with a little unit like this, the thing on top, and um, gradually moving forward, trying new products. I tried all the different e-cig pens, and they just didn't do it for me. And the whole idea is, if you're going to vape, you got to like what you're vaping, right? Um, I have a RT, or uh, this is an RDA, a dripping atomizer, and I just don't like RDAs. It's a pain in the ass. Because who the hell wants to sit and drip? every time you want to vape. Um, I totally understand about flavor and all, but, you know, that just seems like pointless to me. Uh, I guess maybe it's because I do a lot of stuff and I like to function, be able to just take a vape and go. That's just my choice. This one, this little unit, it's not bad. I haven't used it in a while. It's a knee box. Um, it's a who makes this? Kanger? No, not Kanger. Um, I don't know. It might be Kanger. Oh, it is Kanger. It's a Kanger Knee Box Mini, I think. And it's just a little square. It's perfect. And it's got the internal tank. So you just fill up the tank here. Um, it came with a rebuildable coil. And these are like, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks. The place down the street from my house like had them for sale for like $15 on closeout. So I bought three of them. And uh, they're great. But... It just wasn't enough. So I moved on to this. One of my subscribers sent me this unit. Thank you so much. Um, 
this mod box is great. It's a uh, it's got the uh, inset screen. It's very simple. It's got a little cover on it. But anyhow, the, the the tanks that I use on both of these, I don't really care which box I have. Just my thing is just I like to have two batteries because I want it to last a while. But these are the same unit. I bought one for 55 bucks, I think, when it, when they were new, and it was just great. I had it for like a year, and then now that they're a little cheaper, I found one that was probably a clone on eBay for $16, so I ordered it, and that's this one, and I've mixed and matched the colors, but I got it, and the bottom was loose, and it kept leaking, so I called them, and they sent me another one, so now I ended up with two of these tanks, plus a bunch of spare parts. Um, the Griffin 25 is an awesome tank, and the reason why I like it I'd say it's a little bit of an issue to work on it. Uh, I said, no, they're easy. It's easy to build the coils on there and everything. It's just a matter of uh, sometimes it can leak down around this ring edge, and you got to make sure that everything's packed in there well. But you know, whatever first world vaping problems. But but the flavor is decent, and the tank capacity is high. I mean, I don't know if it's five milliliters or what. I think it is. But this tank will just go and go and go and go, whereas like, you know, this other one I just bought the other day will go for, I don't know, about half as long, maybe holds three milliliters. This tank I got here, if I can find the name of it, I had a little case for it around here, I don't remember. Anyway, I bought it, uh, I bought it at the local vape shop the other day for $4.61. Um, I got home and looked it up, and it was like fifty dollar, you know, or it said fifty dollars on the box. And I was like, "Whoa, that's cheap." Um, got it home and looked it up, so they're about twenty-five bucks online, I think. But this little unit has like a globe that screws on that goes over the coils, and so you can see the coils exposed inside it. So when you hit hit it, you can actually see it, you know, which is kind of interesting since all the other ones I've had have had the coils like hidden inside, but. That's just getting into the fancy. What I'm looking for is just something that works and functions. So that's my vape video. I don't really know what else to say. I just felt like letting people know about the diacetyl and the um, potential for formaldehyde. So um, use caution. Be smart. Be smart. You know, every anything that seems too great to be true. You know, uh, vaping is a great way to stop smoking. I think it's phenomenal and I know my lungs are clearer. I know I feel better but I also know that inhaling anything in quantity can be dangerous so we just gotta use our brains right. Talk to y'all later. Have a great day.